Hey guys, my name's Liam. I'm the CEO of Ditch the Label. I get asked questions about me and my job all the time. So I took to the Ditch the Label Instagram last week to get your burning questions. So I'm hopefully gonna get through as many as I possibly can in today's vlog. Is that your natural hair color? <laughs> Um, yes and no. So I actually have a little bit of blonde that gets put through the fringe. Although I'm starting to get a few greys and uh, I blame that on my job. My boyfriend uh, enjoys picking them out. Um, I've probably got about 10 now, um, which is very disappointing. Is marriage on the cards? What about kids? Um, well, I hope so. I've been with my boyfriend for a year and a quarter now. Um, we're very happy. I think the first time I met him, I just knew he was the one, and I don't know how, but I just knew. We do talk about kids, and we definitely want them, so fingers crossed. One thing you can't live without. <sighs> oh, I really resent saying this, but probably my phone. I hate that. I hate the millennial I am sometimes. Who can live without their phone? Thinking about this the other day, like, how did people deal in the 90s with maps? Like, an actual physical printed map? Like. How can you drive in a foreign country with like an actual physical map? Like what a nightmare. Where were we before like Google Maps and stuff? Like I, ju I just can't even fathom it. And I still remember when the internet was dial up and everyone had floppy disks, but I can't really relate to like having a physical map. So yeah, definitely, it's definitely gotta be my phone. Movie moment that makes you cry. Oh, so the movie that is almost, well, no, okay. <laughs> do that again. Move a moment that makes you cry. Okay, so this film makes me cry without a doubt every single time. Lion. Oh my god. It makes me like really ugly cry. Like not just a little tear dropping, like really like snotty. My face is red. Like I literally have tears and tears and tears. I don't know what it is, but it just makes me cry so much. Who is your biggest hero? Again, like I feel like it's a bit cliche, but my mum. Without going into like the full story, like for a long time she was a single parent and she went to university when I was 15 and there was me and my little brother and she literally brought us up on a student loan but we didn't really know and I always feel really bad but at school we used to always wear these shoes called Rockports, I don't know if anyone remembers them and they were like, they were pretty expensive. I found out as an adult my mum would save all year long to buy me these shoes for school and this one year I went mad because I said they weren't the ones that I wanted which is really cringe. My mum has always kind of been a trailblazer in our family and like has really inspired me to go to university and she's just been a moral compass and a rock throughout my whole life and I guess most people probably say a family member is a hero but for me it's definitely got to be my mum. Do you have any tattoos and if you could get one what would it be? Okay no I don't have any tattoos. I don't think I could really pull it off. I've never really been that fussed. Although when I was 15 I wanted stars on my wrists. I mean which 15 year old in the MySpace generation didn't? Why did you start a charity? <sighs> so my motivation behind Ditch the Label was because I'd experienced bullying for so long and I felt like there was a real gap in support and I felt that well, I knew from my research that loads of kids were going through similar things to what I was going through and I knew something was needed in the world like Ditch the Label. So when I graduated university in 2012, I went through what I now call the quarter life crisis, which is when you're like, when you've been in education your whole life and you've known what's coming for the next six months and then all of a sudden you have no idea. Yeah, I think it's perfectly normal to panic a little bit. You know, I was like, oh my God, what do I want to do for a job? Like, what's next for me? And I'd always had this idea of Ditch the Label and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to give it a go. And it was a really tough three years to get it started and to start getting funding. You know, I was kind of doing it around my kitchen table for a long time. I was working in a clothes shop and selling my staff discounted clothes on eBay <laughs> to pay my rent and you weren't allowed to do that but I did it because I'm a rock star I'm just kidding and I just kind of did whatever I could to make ends meet and you know it really paid off and absolutely was the best decision I ever made what's your favorite takeaway I mean I love a cheeseburger like there's no two ways about it like I, I do love a cheeseburger I think the moment I realized I was an adult was when I went to a restaurant and ordered fish Starbucks order oh, I love Starbucks so I usually would get a caramel macchiato made with almond milk when I was at university I have used to have the most extra Starbucks order ever I want to try and remember it so it was a grande caramel frappuccino double blended with two shots of sugar-free hazelnut with cream and something else to go 
So annoying. Did you ever feel left out during school all the time? Um, I think the worst thing for me was PE. I was always picked last during breaks and lunch break. Um, you know, there was a lot of times I'd just walk around on my own. I did have a handful of friends, but like, it was just really lonely and I just, I hated it. And my thing was I just wanted to become invisible. It was honestly, it was so awful. I think the best way of describing how I felt all the time was, you know, like when you go to a party and you don't know anyone and the person you've gone with has gone to the loo and your instinct is to like pull out your phone because you're like, oh my God, I literally don't know anybody. It was like that all the time, but the only thing is I didn't have a phone. But um, yeah, it was, it was really tough. Favorite holiday spot? Mm. I can tell you my least favorite holiday spot, which was Mykonos. Why did I pronounce it like an American way? Mykonos. Mykonos is a British way of pronouncing it. Mykonos American. I don't know who I am sometimes. Mykonos, I really didn't enjoy that holiday. I had my phone stolen very early on. I just found it pretty boring. It's very Instagram and it looks great, but I mean, I was there for 10 days and it was just overkill. Favorite holiday spot? I don't know, because I like to try new places all the time. Um, I was just in Slovenia, which is very picturesque. There's mountains everywhere. It's really beautiful, but I don't really have like a set favorite holiday spot. Most recent binge watch. Oh. So I was watching Sex Education and I actually really like it, but I've only watched half of it and I forgot to watch the other half. So mental note, I need to carry on watching it. Other than that, I don't really know. What are some of the rudest questions people ask you? Okay, this is very easy. I've had people ask me if I've got a day job to pay my bills. I've asked people ask me if uh, I'm looking for a job, if I'm full time or part time. I get asked how much I earn all the time. And it's actually really offensive. I find it really uncomfortable, but I always have to be polite. You know, in answer to those questions, like Ditch is my full-time job. We're a relatively large organization. I'm here in the Ditch Label office. And you know, we do a lot of really important work. You literally, it's impossible to do it on a part-time basis. How much do you earn? This is the question that I'm usually asked the most. I search my name and like the number one search term is net worth. So there's a lot of curiosity about how much I earn. That's very private and just because I work for a charity doesn't mean that people have the right to ask me. I mean, most people probably agree it's a little bit offensive to ask how much somebody earns. I do understand their curiosity, but for me, like, I think some things are kind of private. I mean, I literally get asked that in the middle of meetings sometimes, or when I meet somebody new, they'll ask how much I earn, or they'll ask if I'm full-time or part-time, if I volunteer. Like, what I will say is, like, charities especially like Ditch the Label, you know, everyone in the team is hugely talented and exceptionally good at what they do. We would not be able to provide the support that we can provide without paying staff. Like you cannot build, it is literally impossible to build a sustainable charity without paying your, your team. Like you, you just can't do it. And I think a lot of people don't really understand that part of charities. But you know, a charity is just a business, but instead of making profit, all that money goes into providing support. Christmas or birthdays? Um, it used to be birthdays, because it was all about me. <laughs> um, but now, like, now that I'm 28, it's probably more Christmas-based, because I actually really like to give gifts. Christmas for me isn't really about like what it used to be. Like I used to be super excited about what gifts I was gonna get, and now it kind of feels like more the other way. Um, I really enjoy getting thoughtful gifts for people. Um, I enjoy being around my family. Uh, my boyfriend's family actually lives down the road from my family. It's crazy story and so our families kind of get together and it's really really nice so I would say Christmas what's your favorite way to eat potatoes what a random question actually I watched a documentary about potatoes the other day it was actually about potato waffles and how they're made um chips how do you deal with online hate? So I get quite a bit of online abuse. I think when I first started to get it, it used to affect me a lot more than it does now. Know that people who are abusive online usually have issues going on offline that they're not dealing with properly. So I think that's helpful to know. Um, sometimes if I'm getting a lot of it, um, I'll have a friend or a colleague kind of go through all my mentions before I see them and instantly report or block people. I think that's always a good thing to shield yourself. Um, and I think another thing that I've learned is to not seek it out. Like we all have a curiosity to see what people think and, and say about us, but you know, those things aren't always gonna be positive and there's not really much you can do about it. So I think just distancing myself from like comment sections and stuff has actually really helped because it can be really distracting. And you know, if you're trying to do a job and you're trying to put out a narrative or whatever it is, and you're getting all this abuse, like it can really 
take over. Um, so I think it's important to compartmentalize it. Worst habits, um, drink a lot of coffee and I probably eat a little bit more junk food than I probably should. Um, other than that, I don't really know. Oh, actually I put myself down quite a bit. Um, I'm pretty harsh on myself. So the movie that is almost, well, no, <laughs> do that again. Uh, I can't do it. All of them are today in our Q&A vlog. Wait, and I've got quite a flirty tracksuit on. It's got little zippers, so if I want to show a bit of ankle. Wait, let me do that again. <laughs>